Okay, I've shown you how to install Gazwall and basically use it. Let's put it through its paces and see if it's any good. Now, I've been around, I've browsed a few sites and downloaded a couple of nasties. Now, I've got no live protection on here. The only thing I have is Gazwall. I've disabled everything else. I don't even have the firewall active. So I'm going to install the bot. Now in amongst this lot, there's Trojan clickers, there's IRC bots, backdoor downloads, and so on. And here we have the first of the pop-ups where Botex is modifying a critical system resource. The processes have gone from 32 to 33, so it's no big deal. Freezer. We'll allow this one to run, and it's quickly run and disappeared. We've now got 34 processes. Setup. Now these are rogue applications. Again, they're modifying uh, critical system resources. This is Virus Protector. It's isolated from the system. And I'll close that window. And yet another one. As you can see here, the pop-ups are quite happy at the moment. Secure INS 99. Very high CPU usage. That will continue and allow it to install personal security. I'll pause whilst it does this because it takes a little while and you can see the pop-ups here are going crazy. Okay, whilst personal security is still installing, let's install a few more bits and pieces and see what they do. Here we have G24, which is running here. G96, which is running here. GF2536 and here we go with the pop-ups way of life eh? video plugins I'm quite sure you're used to seeing these sort of things these are all isolated from the system and will be run isolated from the system now because they were downloaded through Gazwall in an isolated browser then they've all got the G icon on them and this is very useful now set up SE2010 is modifying a critical system resource. CPU is 100%, processes are 51 and rising. Okay, I've gone from 32 processes up to 73 at the moment. And CPU usage is 100%, 76 processes. And it'll carry on rising, I think. It may peak out around about here. Okay, I've opened Gazwall again. I've hit F5, which will refresh the isolated applications. And we'll see what there is running. Okay, as you can see, there are quite a few processes running. Run DLLs, SVC host, and SVC hosting. Now, if you were to go through Task Manager and try and kill these off, you might just hit the wrong one. Now here you can just terminate and click OK. But this can take a little while as it refreshes each time. And as you can see they're coming up. You can terminate them and you can do this one by one. Alternatively if you have a USB stick which is a great thing to have there's a little program called Rkill. Now I have a load of applications on a USB stick, it's my toolbox. Now if I drag this to the desktop and close the USB stick. Now if I just minimize this window, here's Rkill. Simply double click it to run. If you're in Vista or Windows 7, right click and run as administrator. The command window will open, just sit back and leave it to run. This will kill all the known malware processes. There may be a few it doesn't kill because it doesn't yet know them, but it will save you a lot of try a lot of time going through Gezwall and ending each single process. Once our kill is finished you can go open up Gezwall as we will in a moment and kill the remaining processes and then scan with Super Anti Spyware, Malware Bytes, TDSS Killer just to make sure it's clean. When it's finished it reboots explorer.exe so your desktop icons disappear and they come back and it creates a log file and it tells you the processes it's killed. So you can close that window, open up the Gezwall console and terminate any other remaining processes.
and it may say that it can't terminate it. So go through them and terminate them one by one until such times as all has been cleared. So we'll go down to the bottom and terminate this one. And some of them can be a problem. But gradually you get there. It's a lot quicker than having to go through one by one. And this one keeps coming back, so we need to terminate this one. Can't terminate that one. Terminate that one. And it keeps coming back. So we go into Task Manager, go to yfws.exe, and the process. And as you can see, we're down to 34 processes, which is somewhat better than what it was earlier. Now, if you click on Untrusted Files, right click, start scan, and just leave it to run. It takes a few minutes. Just go away, make a coffee, and then come back. Okay, here we have a list of the untrusted files. All you have to do is click on the first one, scroll down to the bottom, hold down the shift key and left click on the last one, then right click delete file and it will delete all of them. And again, you can see the progress here, it's very quick and it's deleted them. Now the next thing to do is to run Super Anti Spyware Portable, which I have on my USB stick because it's a nice handy place to keep it. Now, all I have to do is click here to start, select my language, and click OK. And the first thing to do is check for updates, even though it's the portable version, it can be updated. OK, Super Anti Spyware has been updated, so scan my computer, C drive, quick scan. Click next, let it scan. I will also scan with malware bytes. Now the reason for this is they're both excellent programs, they both find different things and work in different ways. I will also run the TDSS killer to see if that finds anything. And as you can see this has come back quite clean, so I'm quite happy with that. Press any key and I'll allow, allow the two scans to continue. Okay, Super Anti Spyware took 23 minutes and it found three threats. Personal security, cord loader. Malware bytes also found three threats. Trojan downloaders, LSAS. This is the one that was causing a problem. So in this instance, they both found exactly the same thing. So I'll allow it to remove it, kill it off, and reboot in a moment and come back to a clean machine. If you want any more details, check out my blog, which is Free PC Security. You'll find the download links there as well, and you can find it at freepcsecurity.co.uk.